Welcome to our Palm Sunday worship. We gather in the Lord's house again while you rest at your homes and invite you to participate with the bulletin that is provided on the computer, either through download or on a smartphone or tablet. We thank you for joining with us today. We thank Michael Sills, who is videoing us, Gordon Miller, who is providing special music, and David Good, who is our lector for today. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, uh, we have a musical selection from Gordon Miller. Consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, dismay to my acquaintances, 
and when they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trust in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Today's epistle reading is from Philippians 2. Paul uses an early Christian hymn to help us comprehend Jesus' obedient selflessness on the cross and how God has made Christ Lord over all reality. The perspective of the cross becomes the way we rightly understand God, Christ, our own lives, and the fellowship within the community of Christ. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking on the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the, and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our Holy Gospel for this Sunday, the Palm Sunday, comes from St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A large crowd gathered their cloaks and spread them on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Dear fellow believers, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is an exciting day for Jesus and his disciples. This is the day they've been longing for. For you see, this is the day when he enters into Jerusalem, coming in as a conquering hero, maybe, till they find out, bring me a donkey and a colt. A donkey? We need us a big old steed, something huge and powerful to prove that Jesus is in the line and lineage of David to come as a conquering hero to smite all these Romans and to set things right and new. And when he gets there, all of a sudden the world is filled with turmoil for them. People are yelling and screaming and children are bringing cloaks and clothing and fir, uh, branches from, from ferns and laying them on the ground and Jesus comes in. Not as a conquering hero. Not as a man with a sword in his hand and fire on his lips. But a humble person riding on the back of a donkey, a colt. And as he enters, everybody's there. But they're there in body, 
They're there in anticipation. They're there in expectance. But where is everybody in their spirit? For Jesus had been telling them for three years now that he was not going to be the Redeemer, the Savior that they had wanted. He was going to come and be the Savior that they needed. So where is everybody? Where are they at in that new relationship that Jesus has been telling them about? You know, here's the God who raised the dead. Here's the God who healed all sorts of infirmities and maladies merely by spitting on the ground and making mud and slathering in eyes. Who opened ears by sticking his fingers in them. By grabbing hold of tongues and helping people learn to speak. Where is everybody in their expectations of what Jesus is about? They are still stuck at this moment, back in their mindset of King David and King Solomon, where all of the greatness is, rest, is resting. But not for Jesus. He comes in, humble, realizing that the end of the journey is drawing near, going up into Jerusalem, the place where prophets go to die. The place that gets plundered so that Israel is destroyed while it could be the Babylonians, the Assyrians, certainly the Romans are about to, are about to do that as well. But where is everybody in the expectation of what's going to lie ahead? Well, we know where we are at, don't we? We're at home right now. But we're not home alone. We're not without the communion of saints, the people who believe in the story that has been told and lived for three millennia plus, the story that emanates from Old Testament times about the Redeemer coming humble. We don't have to be in a sanctuary, in a building, to be the people of God who hear the story, believe the story, and begin to live the story out. Where is everybody today in their relationship to this Redeemer, this Savior who comes humbly? Oftentimes, we too want an extraordinary, a supernatural, a miraculous God, or at least some intervention on God's part in our lives. How many people are praying that they don't run into the COVID virus? How many people are praying that if they do, they don't have to go to the hospital? How many are praying that family and friends who are on the bubble in life don't contract this? Where are we at on this Palm Sunday? If we're not the people yelling Hosanna to God, we're going to miss what lies ahead. So today, as we gather ourselves for worship for Palm Sunday, we've got Jesus in Jerusalem. Shortly, day turns into night, and night into day. Where is everybody then? I invite you to come back later and find out where we're going to be with the one who came for us. Amen. We respond to God's words, the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and those in need. God of mercy, awaken your church to a new proclamation of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak, that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. 
protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species, prosper the works of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and wholeness. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Sir. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that causes us to turn against one another. Give courage to leaders who seek liberation for the oppressed. Bring peace and hope to those who are in prison and those who face execution. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of mercy, we pray for all who will prepare and lead worship in this holy week. In all things, show us the ways that call us to die to self, to live for you, and to give ourselves for the sake of others, agencies, and services. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We commend to your gracious care in keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils that surround them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of mercy, send your saving help to those of all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded, comfort the dying, bring peace to those suffering chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all who cry out for relief, especially those whom we name in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life with all your witnesses in heaven and earth. Especially let us boldly confess the names of, our, of Jesus Christ, our resurrection, and our hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to our steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be you always. And also with you. Receive this benediction. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Amen.
just a reminder that you are invited to join with us again for worship on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and then again next Sunday for our service of resurrection on the day of Easter. Until that time, you are in our prayers, your health, your well-being, your spiritual life, that of yours, your family, and your friends. Until next time we gather, remember that our service has ended. Now may God's peace fill you this day and all days with the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.